1998 through 2012 Ford Ranger with the 4.0 liter engine, thermostat housing replacement. I'm Brian Esther from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process of changing out the upper and lower thermostat housing. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you the parts and part numbers. This right here is the lower portion or the main body of the thermostat housing here. And then uh, this next piece is the top or the upper piece that you're gonna need to get. And then we're gonna get the thermostat itself. And I'll link all these up in the description of the video. We're gonna get started by removing the top engine cover here. You need a seven millimeter socket to remove the three fasteners to hold it down. So there's two in the front and then there's gonna be one in the back. Now you can set this top cover aside. We're gonna remove the air boot here. So you need an eight millimeter socket to loosen up the clamps here and here at the air box. So one at the throttle body, one at the air box. So right here on the side of the air boot is a uh, vent line that we need to remove. There's a little tab on it that you have to push downwards to get it to uh, pull off. The tab you're trying to uh, push down on is a green colored tab, so it's right here. So you're going to just push it and flare it off to the side, and then you can pull the hose off. Now we're going to pull the boot off the throttle body and off the air box, and there's going to be an electrical connector connected to it, but we're going to leave it on there and just flip it out of our way. Now we're going to unbolt the throttle body here. I'm using an 8mm socket with my cordless ratchet to remove these four fasteners holding this down. We're not going to take the cables off or the electrical connector on the side for the throttle position sensor. We're going to leave that all connected. And we're going to take the four fasteners out and we're going to flip it over and out of our way. So all the power tools that I'm using in this video, I will link them up in the description of the video. If you're interested in picking any of those up, you can find those links in the description. So like I said, we're going to leave the cable and the throttle position sensor plugged in. We're just going to flip it up and uh, flip it out of our way. If you have to, you can bungee cord it out of your way. Now I got a bucket underneath the vehicle and I'm going to go ahead and squeeze the hose clamp here and pull the upper radiator hose off. Uh, this car had already leaked out most of the coolant through the uh, thermostat housing, so the coolant level was low. If yours is full to the top, you may want to reach down below on the bottom of the radiator as a pet cock. You can open that up and drain a little bit of the, uh, the coolant out. So now I um, pulled the hose off and flipped it out of the way. Now we're going to unbolt the uh, upper uh, thermostat housing. So I'm using an 8 millimeter wobbly socket to get back here and crack the, uh, the uh, fastener loose. You can use a wrench, a ratcheting wrench, it will fit back under there. Once you got the rear bolt removed, then you can remove the two front ones right here on the front here. So I was able to loosen up the rear bolt and spin it out by hand. Now that I got the rear one removed, now I'm going to take out the two front ones. I switched back over to my, my impact tool here. It makes a lot quicker work of doing jobs like this. So I'm going to pull the two front ones out. Now that I got the upper housing unbolted, I used a little flat blade screwdriver and gave the uh, housing a little twist to pop it loose. It kind of gets stuck on there. And then I just basically lifted it off these little studs that it's mounted onto. And you kind of just twist it and angle it at certain angles and the uh, upper housing will come out like this. The next hose we need to get off is the little 90 degree elbow one here. So I'm using my pliers here to pull the squeeze clamp and slide that up off the uh, nipple here. Once that slid up, then we should be able to pull it off. But I noticed that this hose here had the squeeze clamp holding it and kind of blocking my elbow here. So what I was going to attempt to do was take the uh, my pliers here and uh, pull the squeeze clamp and get it to come off. But it was on there so tight that I couldn't get my pliers in there and uh, I was going to risk damaging the hose. In most cases, I would recommend you replace the hoses here. But in our case, we couldn't get the hoses in time for the customer. So there's two hoses on this job that we were able, weren't were able to get for the customer in time. He needed his vehicle back, so he chanced at not replacing it. I recommend you replace them. This 90 degree elbow one right here is the one of the hoses I recommend replacing. And then I'll show you the other one in a minute. So if you can get the elbow off, you're in good shape. I pulled the hose clamps back here for the one the hose above it. I finally got that off and I pulled the hose clamp off. I still couldn't get the hose to pop off out of the way. So what I decided to do is take out this vent valve right here that's screwed on. So there's two eight millimeter screws. I removed the one here on the top and then on the bottom side of it, there's a second uh, screw that you need to get to. So what I did is just flex the hose up with my thumb and I was able to slip my uh, socket underneath the hose and then get right onto the fastener and back that out. I know my elbow is blocking the, the view here, but it wasn't that difficult to get to. I just flexed it out of the way, the hose out of the way, and I was able to get the fastener out. Once I got the two fasteners removed, now I pulled the whole uh, valve off like this. It's just held on with an O-ring right here. There seals it in, into the intake with the O-ring. So now I just pushed it out of the way. Now there's a lot of room to get in here and get to the, um, the elbow hose here. 
So now I can pull the elbow hose off like this and I can push it off to the side and out of the way. Next, we're gonna unplug the uh, coolant temp sensor here. So, so you just squeeze the tab on the side of the coolant temp sensor and the electrical connector will pop off. I had to use two hands, one to push it with my fingers and one to pull it up. Now we need to get the hose clamp here on the bottom hose uh, slid downward. So, so I'm using my hose clamp pliers here to squeeze the hose clamp. And once I got it squeezed, I'll slide it down as far as I can get it. So once I got the hose clamp slid down, then I used a pick tool like this, a heavy duty one, and I slid it between the hose and the uh, housing here, and that helps break the uh, the bond that it uh, gets when it's been on there for a long time, so the hose will stick on there. So I, I broke that bond by working the pick around the hose. Now there's three 8 millimeter bolts holding the uh, housing down, so I'm gonna go with my impact tool here and, and remove the first one here, and there's one a little bit further back, and then there's one underneath the throttle body neck there that we're going to get to. And uh, to get to that one, what I did was I used a, uh, just an 8 millimeter flex head wrench here. You can even get uh, a standard uh, ratchet and short socket in there. There's enough room in there. So go ahead and remove the three fasteners. So once you get the three fasteners removed, now we can pull the housing off. You have to pull it off the rubber hose and kind of wiggle this at angles. You also have to push the uh, elbow here out of the way, the electrical connector for the, uh, the temp sensor, all that is going to be in your way. So you need to push all that out of the way. Also, there's a wire loom running across here. I believe it went to the alternator. It's attached to the alternator here. So you're going to have to either work around that and pr just pull it out of your way as you lift the housing up. I decided to go ahead and pop the wire loom out of the, its bracket right here. And that gave me a little bit more slack so I can push the wire out of the way. And you just take your time and work with it. You kind of twist it uh, left, right, angle it up, up and down, left, right. And uh, once you figure out that angle, the housing will slip out. It's a little on the tight side, but it will slip out. And once I finally got it free, it worked it out towards the front, towards the fan here. Now I'm gonna suck out any remaining coolant here in the lower housing here on the bottom portion of the intake. You can do this with a turkey base here, it works really well. So after that I use a little compressed air to blow out the bolt holes, make sure there's no coolant inside the bolt holes. If you try to tighten up the uh, new bolts into the uh, holes with coolant in, it won't compress and it'll crack the, ha the housing. Now I'm gonna clean up the mating surface here, make sure that this is nice and clean, uh, free of any debris that the new gasket that goes on there will uh, come in contact with and cause a leak or anything like that. So I use a razor blade, uh, shop towels, and compressed air to clean all that up. So now I'm going to take the coolant temp sensor out of the old housing. You just pull the little tab here off like this, and then you can pull the sensor out. It comes with all the new O-rings on the uh, new one to, to uh, transfer this over, or you can order a new temp sensor if you choose. So I'm just going to swap out the O-ring here on the tip. And to do that, I just used a sharp pick tool and picked the old O-ring out. Then I slipped on the new O-ring. So on this housing here, there's a plug that uh, plugs off a block-off plug. The housing that we're using has an option for putting a couple different sensors in here. So we want to put our sensor back in the same location as the one we took out. And this one, the plug is in, a, in the hole where the sensor used to be. So we need to take the plug out and swap it over. As you can see on the old housing, it did not have that plug. So we're gonna take this plug out and swap it over, and then we're gonna put the coolant temp sensor in there and put the two clips in to hold them both in. I also lubricated the O-rings with a little bit of silicone-based uh, lube. If you don't have that, you can use liquid dish soap. It works really well. So lubricate the seals before you put them in, and that helps them push in and won't pinch or roll the, uh, the seals. Then you install the two retainer clips. Now on the bottom side of the uh, thermostat housing is a, another O-ring gasket that we need to put install. It comes with the kit. So we're going to install this O-ring into the, uh, the little round groove here. So this O-ring fit pretty snug. And uh, so what I did was I flipped it over and gave it a little shake to make sure it's not going to fall off when we go to install it. And it's pretty snug and so I'm not worried about it falling off. So now we're going to slip it back into position. So normally I would recommend replacing the hose below and that elbow hose, but like I told you earlier, we couldn't get it in time for this customer. So we're gonna go ahead and work it back into position. And we're, once we get it in there, we're gonna stab the hose onto the little the port first. So right now what I'm doing is I'm working around the wire, wire loom here and slipping it underneath the wire loom and just taking my time to uh, 
just wiggle it and work with it. You have to massage the wiring and uh, you don't want to pull or pry on anything, but you just want to lightly maneuver things left, right, up, down, just, just to uh, get the housing in there. Once you got it underneath, you want to slide it on the rubber hose and slide it down. And then you can push it down onto the ports where it mounts onto the, the lower portion of the intake there. And then you can, uh, now you can start the three fasteners. I like to start all these by hand. To get, that way you can wiggle the uh, housing left to right a little bit to help line everything up. So I feed them all down by hand, start them all by hand, a few threads. And then once they're all started, then you can run them in. So now that I got all the bolts started, I'm going to run them down until they're just touching. And then we're going to torque them down with a torque wrench. So I'm using my impact tool here with the variable trigger. And just uh, as I get close to the bottom, I, I ease up on it and just let it barely touch. And once I, that's done, then I do the back one by hand, spin it down. You can get a, a little ratchet in there with no problem or a ratcheting wrench. Now with a torque wrench, we're going to torque the three fasteners down. There's just enough room to get the torque wrench underneath the uh, back portion of it I have a little flex head on my uh, my ratchet here and I'm using a short uh, short socket and we're gonna torque these all down to eight foot-pounds it's a little bit tight getting back there but you can fit it in there I'm using a 3 8 ratchet to do this with a short eight millimeter socket once you get all three of these fasteners torqued down then you can slip the 90 degree elbow hose back on and put the clamp back on once you got that secured then you can also plug in the electrical coolant temp sensor then you can take the squeeze clamp and pull it up onto the uh, lower hose here. Make sure it's uh, secure and, and clamping onto the neck of the uh, thermostat housing. Once you got the coolant temp sensor plugged in and the two hoses reconnected, then we're going to work on the thermostat. So you can take the uh, thermostat and put the spring side down and you put it into the, uh, the groove. Then the O-ring will fit on top of the thermostat and you'll feel it fit around the outer edges of the wall of the uh, thermostat housing here. So that's going to fit on top of the thermostat. Now you can slip the new upper thermostat housing into position and put it onto the ports. Then you can start the three fasteners by hand. After that, you can run the three fasteners down until they're snug. You're not going to tighten them up with the uh, impact tool or by hand. Just run them down until they're snug. The rear one I had to use a ratchet, a quarter inch ratchet with a, uh, sh a stubby socket and a uh, flex head ratchet. Once you got them all run down to the snug, now you can torque them all down to eight foot pounds. They will, there's just enough room to get the 3 8 ratchet in here and torque this down as well. Now that you got the uh, thermostat housing torqued down, if you took off the uh, PCV vent hose here, uh, you need to put the squeeze clamp back on. I, I slid it back trying to get it off and it would not come off. so. I took it off so I'm going to slide this back into position and uh, now once that's back into position I'm going to slide the uh, the housing back into the uh, the throttle body here and uh, this o-ring here if it's in bad shape I recommend you change it out mine's in pretty good shape so I'm going to reuse it it's just a vacuum source it's not like coolant or anything goes through it so I plug it back in now I'm going to start the two fasteners and just run those into their uh, secure and they're like wood screw style screws so I'm going to run both of those back in so I ran the top bolt in first before I uh, started the uh, second bolt. So I just ran it in almost until it's fully snug. Then what I do is I take the bottom screw and I put it in the socket with a piece of paper. That way it holds it in place. So this little piece of paper I folded up, put it in the socket, put the, uh, the bolt in there, and that will kind of hold the, uh, the screw into the uh, socket there. That way I can turn it upside down. I don't have to worry about it falling off. Now I just slightly flex the hose out of the way. And reach back here and start this bolt by hand once you got it started by hand you can use your ratchet to run it in until it's fully tight now you can take your upper radiator hose and go ahead and put that back onto the thermostat housing and put the clamp back on now i'm going to take the throttle body and flip it back into position i'm going to reuse the gasket just make sure you inspect it if it's uh it looks like it's in good shape you can reuse these a couple times if you have to so now i'm going to put it back into position and start the four fasteners now that I got the four fasteners started, I went ahead and ran them in with my cordless ratchet here. And I ran them in until they were uh, snug and then I gave them about a quarter turn more. There's not really a torque specs because these are wood screw style uh, bolts and they, they don't torque like uh, regular fasteners. So go ahead and run them in until they're snug and then about a quarter turn more. Now you can take the air snorkel and flip it back into position, mount it onto the air box and then mount it onto the throttle body and tighten up the, uh, the two clamps. 
You can also put the vent hose back on once you got that done. So you just push it onto the port. You may have to flare the little tab off to the side. Push it on, give it a little pull to make sure it's not gonna pop back off. Once you got the boot secure, you wanna give the throttle body a little uh, working and make sure everything is working with the way it's supposed to. Nothing is uh, snagging or hanging up. Now we can put the top engine cover on and start the three fasteners. And you're just gonna run them down until they're snug. Now you can fill it up with 50-50 mix, pre-mixed Ford approved coolant. Now that the radiator is fully full, I went ahead and started the vehicle up and I got it running. And we're gonna let it run for about 10-15 minutes and the coolant level may drop when the thermostat opens up. So the way we're gonna know is the uh, thermostat has opened up is if we grab the upper hose, the radiator hose right here, and if you give it a little squeeze, if you feel it get hot, then you know the thermostat has opened up and then the coolant level may drop. You may have to top it off. We're also going to inspect for any type of leaks uh, around anything we worked with or worked around. So if everything there is good, one of the other things you may want to do is turn the uh, heater on uh, the hottest position with the fan on the lowest position, and you want to feel for the hot air coming out of the vents. That'll also let you know that the thermostat has opened up. Then you can make sure the overflow is topped off to the proper level. I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, encourage you to subscribe, invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.